All right, hey there everyone. I'm in Washington, D.C. and I'm more specifically outside of the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. This is one of the greatest natural history museums in the world. Uh, so we're gonna go take a look at that. Let's go. This was the third building of the Smithsonian Institution, opened in 1911. It did hold the natural history collection as well as uh, some art and history collections, and it's been expanded. This giant taxidermy African elephant has been greeting visitors since it opened, and the rotunda in here is amazing. What I really like about this museum is that it's one of the only really old and antiquated great museums left in existence. They have the old building that was built to be a museum like they used to build them. The African bush elephant is the largest land mammal and this is the largest taxidermy bush elephant in the world. Starting off inside of the Hall of Mammals where they have a bunch of taxidermy mammals. You can see there's like a tiger or something. And you don't see a taxidermy dolphin or manatee every day. This part of the museum is pretty old fashioned. I don't think they've changed the exhibits a whole lot. And so they have all sorts of taxidermy animals. Don't think I've ever seen a taxidermy walrus before. That's pretty awesome. There's a moose, one of my favorites. The Smithsonian taxidermy is pretty good. They have a panda up there. Um, but some of it does look pretty trash. Here's a white rhinoceros. Here are African mammals. There's a fight between these tigers and this fox thing. Here is the world's tallest mammal, the giraffe. Probably with the world's largest tongue also. This is the most terrifying animal in here, the Cape Porcupine. That is massive. This is of a water hole in the Sahara Desert, and this taxidermy of a giraffe drinking with its legs like that is awesome. And there's some zebras too. This is a kinkajou, which is a South American raccoon. And there's a little monkey in there. This capybara is one of the largest living rodents, and that's the nuts they eat. All right, mites, welcome to Australia, where all these animals can kill, including that little jackrabbit. I apologize for that horrific Australian accent. All the animals in this case show uh, food shame. You have the cop right here, the carnivore. And, uh, never seen a taxidermy orangutan. There's a gray wolf. Here's some animals from the plains. They have a bison and a jackrabbit, but they omit jackalopes, which I still believe are 100% real. That's a caribou. And here is a taxidermy brown bear. Now I'm entering the Hall of Human Origins. And here they have some uh, replica skulls of our ancestors. Uh, this is Homo. I, don't, uh, I, I can't pronounce scientific names. And of course this exhibit is the government trying to corrupt our minds with fake information. The great Ken Ham is correct with his uh, creationist theory. Brilliant. Just kidding, you stupid. And here they have uh, the evolution in skulls. I think most of these are original fossils. So the first one there, Homo sapiens. A lot of these are Homo sapiens. These are actually all Homo sapiens. Probably should have read first. Yeah, 
Yikes. Here's a recreation of a cave and cave art. Now these are super old human artifacts. That's 60,000 years old and that flute is one of the oldest instruments in the world. They have this bronze statue of a Neanderthal and her baby. Here's some genuine skeleton parts of a Homo florianensis, 80,000 years old. Oh, they're replica actually. And here they have waxed heads of the stages of evolution. They're pretty hilarious actually. I'm glad we didn't stick with the giant cheekbones. This replica of this really shows that the person died from a massive blow to the head. Like JFK. It's a crocodile bite. <laughs> Wow, this is a real Neanderthal skeleton found in a cave in Iraq, 45,000 to 35,000 years old. This is the growth of brain size. This shows regional differences. The one on the left would have been from like Africa or Southeast Asia. This one would have been from Europe or the Middle East. This is what Lucy would have looked like. This is the Hall of Oceans. Here's some taxidermy coral. Don't know how that works. There is a sea cucumber in there. There's a bird and jellyfish model. There's some fossils in here. The centerpiece of this exhibit is the giant whale hanging from the ceiling. That is more specifically the North Atlantic right whale. Here's a live coral reef. Okay. That's a giant pickled squid. This is a giant squid. It's glass casket. It was 36 feet long when it was alive. Now I'm going to be exploring the second floor exhibits. Here's the rotunda again. This is the National Gem Collection. It's way too crowded in here. This is the Hope Diamond, one of the most beautiful and historic diamonds in world history. Its story began with a French merchant traveler named Jean-Baptiste Tavernier who purchased it in India and he sold it to King Louis XIV in 1668. The diamond was cut a little bit then and it has since and the Sun King wore it during ceremonial occasions. In 1791 when Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette tried to flee France, the French royal treasury was turned over to the government and the crown jewels were looted and the diamond was stolen. Then it changed hands a lot and ended up at the Smithsonian. That's a copper sheet from Northern Michigan. That's a sandstone concentration. Really cool formation. So this is the hallway of minerals. So many awesome mineral formations in here. Some crystal. These are called zeolites from India. There's fluorite and fool's gold pyrite. Hey, right here. What's that, Mom? 
Jorge. Azurite? There's a bunch of Arkansas quartz. That's Herkimer diamonds. This is one of my favorite minerals, amethyst. Yeah, this is one of the best collections in the world. Here's silver and copper. This is what the inside of Sterling Hill Mine in New Jersey looked like because of the rich mineral deposits from formerly being in an ocean. And this is a replica of the inside of a cave. Geyser on it. That forms around geysers sometimes. There's rock columns like the ones that form Giant's Causeway and Devil's Tower. Stump of a tree that was destroyed by Mount St. Helens. Also, in major museums are lucky to have one new rock. Just this one has four of them. The museum has a vast meteorite collection. I'm in the Smithsonian Osteology Collection. That's a gray whale skeleton. There's a pronghorn and deer. It's a zebra skeleton and There's a stellar sea cow skeleton. I always thought those were made up. Those are apparently real. A bunch of bird skeletons. Crocodile skeletons. The outer coffin and lid of Tenkan Su butchered that, and it is over 3,000 years old. And this is a divine bullhead mummified. The meat of the bull would have likely been eaten by the king or priests, but its head was mummified so that it could see, eat, and hear forever. There are mummified cats, birds, and even reptiles. This isn't a real body, but it's a replica of one. The process of mummification is very morbid but fascinating, especially considering it was done thousands of years ago. Here's a triceratops skeleton in here. This dinosaur with an unpronounceable name was the cow of the 
Cretaceous era. This is the National Tyrannosaurus Rex. Here's some paleontologists at work forced to work in front of 30 stupid tourists at all times. That's the eastern moa. They're all dead. And here is the dodo bird. Genuine dodo bird skeleton. And here's a Carolina parakeet. They're also extinct. The museum also has Martha, the last passenger pigeon, in its collection, but uh, they haven't been displaying her. They have a live butterfly pavilion in here, but you have to pay seven bucks to go inside, so I'm not going to do that. This is an exhibit about disease, and here's some animals that spread deadly diseases. Like chickens, they're dangerous. This is a totem pole from British Columbia. It's like almost four floors tall. This is a rye from the Micronesian island of Yap. And it was used as currency. And this is a genuine Easter Island egg. Okay, so that was the National Museum of Natural History. I hope you enjoyed. This museum is amazing. There's a lot I didn't even show. Uh, but anyways, if you like this, I have a lot of videos on the Smithsonian Museums. I went to most of them and in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching.